is genuinely horrifying. <laughs> what is up, Robot Wars fans? Hardcore Kid here with another edition of the Hardcore Podcast. We're taking a break this week because BuggleBots, um, they just aired the, uh, the uh, Dung Beetle Rumble. And uh, the video was only about uh, one match long and had the awards. So we're going to be taking a break for that. And we're going to be getting back to the gloriousness that is Robot Wars Extreme Warriors. And tonight we're going to be reviewing Heat C. And joining us for the letter C is the conjuring of the one and only Otaku Nate. <laughs> oh, I sure hope you guys love to laugh, because I'm going to laugh so hard when you guys get chomped down that pit of oblivion. <laughs> That's my doink, the clown, the Matt Bourne doink. Mm. And also joining us, he comes from Boston, a.k.a. the home of the biggest clowns of all time, the Red Sox. It is Rossetti's Replicas. For clowns, they sure have a lot of trophies. <laughs> oh, aha, but the Yankees have more. What do you got to say to that? In the 21st century, do they? Um, I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, tonight we're going to be reviewing Heat C, that is Heat 3, of Extreme Warriors, which aired on April 20th, 2002. And this episode, uh... I will say this, the match, most of the matches weren't great, but it did have some very entertaining moments. Moments that made you laugh, in a way. Would you say so, Nate? Oh, absolutely. Yes, and now, um, of course, uh, uh, Extreme Warriors is known for having a lot of gimmicks, and one of the most hilarious gimmicks, one of the most hilarious joke bots of the series is the Conquering Clown. And... <laughs> And would you believe it, but the winner of this particular heat was, in fact, Conquering Clown 2. <gasps> Conquering Clown. It's a clown. It's a clown with a big old blade and a... That yeah. bends way too easily. <laughs> and Basically, it's Little Fly, but if Little Fly was actually, you know, reliable. Reliable and had a bit of personality to it. Uh-huh. Speaking of flies, it even has its own little mascot, which is a little butterfly that sticks out the front. <laughs> yeah. Of course, the most entertaining part about conquering clown this heat, Mick Foley absolutely burying the team. Didn't uh, <laughs> didn't Mick Foley have a rivalry with Doink at some point in his career? Uh, I think he may have had like a few matches on a match or two on Heat, but he had a. He brought Purple the Clown with him to when he visited Vince McMahon in the hospital. <laughs> um, which led to the infamous boink with, with uh, Steve Austin hitting um, McMahon in the head with the frying pan. But yeah, uh, the Conquering Clown. No, well, that segment, uh, the segment in particular, that was the one that introduced the world to Mr. Socko. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, no, so Mr. Socko, Mr. Socko, not Psycho Socko. <laughs> yeah, so the Conquering Clown, um, I'll say this, um, when you, when you get rid of the, uh, the goofiness, the whole comedy act, it's actually a decent machine. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, like, uh, the, the first version, um, it, it, it was mainly just a wedge bot. I have no idea what the arms were supposed to do, but, uh. Yeah, th this version um, it, ha it has it has a lawnmower blade. It it got some good hits in, but it seemed like it would always just like like you said it would just bend. But uh, but um, I guess that's what happens when you have lawnmower blades, not like uh, I don't know a tombstone style blade. But eh, what can you do? It certainly is an entertaining robot. It's not going to be a world beater, but sometimes you just need robots that make you laugh, and that's what Conquering Clown does best. Ian, what do you think of The Clown? Uh, I think it was definitely the best of the heat. Um, very impressive how it just killed some very um, more sensical-looking robots with, <laughs> with like you said, uh, the one or two hits it could get before its blades bent up. Mm. And, uh, of course, uh, the, mo the most notable thing about this uh, robot was, of course, how the head loves to go up in flames, which was... <laughs> 
I got. I gotta say, it, it is nightmarish just seeing that thing burn. And then, uh, just when you think it can't get any worse, in the heat final, it comes in with an iron mask, <laughs> and I'm just like, "What the fuck is this thing?" <laughs> and yet, it won. <laughs> you, you, you could you could you could say it got a bit lucky because uh, Unibite just derped. But uh, hey, wait, what can you do? <laughs> it's 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 definitely. Uh, fun to watch and god bless the team that that you can tell they're having fun even though uh from what i understand that they um they they love to honk the horn a lot (laughs) and disrupt to the chagrin of mick foley (laughs) yeah it's a lot of fun but uh yeah that's all that's all i can say about the clown anything else to say they they had a self-writer sort of thing kind of like the body and the arms would move on some kind of <laughs> a little bit, a L- little bit so of whiplash. It's pos- yeah, it's possible that if they were on their back, they could uh, write from there. I think that was the idea. Just about does it for a clown. Uh, it moves on to the grand final. It's it's uh, it's, it's kind of like Deator making it to a grand final, except because um, I think uh, if uh, they if Deator hadn't. Lo- uh, if Deator had a self-writing mechanism, they probably could have beaten Spawn again. And, and technically they have before in the tag team, but uh, that's beside the point. But uh, hey, comedy entrant, it does well. So I guess we'll move on to the Heat runner-up from the guy who gave us Hyperactive, Red Devil, and whatever crazy contraption he's got going on in uh, China. We have Jerome Miles Unibite 2.0. Unibite. Mm, what do you call that exactly? A s- uh, flipper, spinner flipper? <laughs> I know, I mean like the blade, because it's not exactly a spinning flywheel. Oh, f- screw it. Spinner! It's a spinner. <laughs> and it does... and there's a lifty thingy at the back. It's got it's, it's, got its own uh, goalposts at the back. But, uh, yeah, Unibyte, um... I, I Dr- Jerome Miles, he always loves to put a lot of wacky creations into his bots, and um, this robot, uh, I liked the original Unibite. The saw, I thought the saw blade did a lot of damage, even though it sliced up a lot of its teeth like Mick Foley does. But uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. It, this robot, it's slow. The disc doesn't really seem to have a whole lot of bite to it, despite the name. And the lifting arm at the back really couldn't do anything. It's... I don't know. It, it just, uh... I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you guys think about it? Well, it certainly looks great, no doubt about it. The disc it didn't really do much in the way of damage. I don't know if it was just underpowered or they couldn't get it working properly. But, just like its predecessor, Unibite was way too fragile. Mm. What do you think, Ian? Yeah, they took out a wheel on the clown in the heat final, so that was pretty impressive. Um, so obviously the spinner works. They just couldn't finish the job fast enough. No. Yeah, but uh, it, it's kind of shame. Uh, it, it it looks good, but uh, I I just wish uh, it had there was more to it. And uh, um, little little fun fact, but uh, Jerome Miles uh, he actually did uh, enter Robo Games with a. Uh, uh, a design just like a Unibyte, uh, was that one? I forget, was that, it wasn't called Unibyte, uh, as well, was it? I forget what it, it was, was called. It was called Hyperbyte. Hyperbyte, yeah, so. Yep. Um, like one half of each of the Extreme Warrior bot's names. Yeah, and fortunately didn't work either, but it did burn up very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah but... I like how he um, used Hyperbyte's uh, CAD model to show off uh, Red Devil. Yeah, and a thing it could do. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's um, I I, I give it uh, it, yeah, it, it got kind of lucky I think to get past both rounds, like because in the first round Texas Tornado was hauling it around, and then the second round Brute was just basically manhandling it. But eh, what can you do? But uh, if, there, if there is one other notable thing about Unibyte, it's the first ever victim of the drop zone. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. This was this was recorded before Series 6, so the washing machine dropping on Unibyte is the first use of the drop zone ever. Interesting. And uh, a little spoiler alert, but 
it isn't until the very last episode that we ever get to see the drop zone again. So, what? Why? <laughs> You, mm. you, you introduce a new arena feature and you don't even want to use it. So they used it twice in the all of Extreme Warriors two. They they used it three times. Uh, that they, they used it, the the washing machine again against Night Stalker, and then they used the piano on Snuffles, uh, and that was it. And, mm. uh, it's, it's like uh, there are like episodes. Uh, if you look closely, you can still see the washing machine hanging above the uh, ring. Or at well, some point, I recall the drop box, but it's like. Come on, guys. You have something hanging up there. Do something with it. I mean, they got it working for Nickelodeon, which was filmed yeah. at the same time. Yeah, they, they, they just probably just use the box to drop crap on it. But, uh, yeah, and at least in the, in the Dutch series, they use the drop zone like every episode. Nice. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, Unibyte. Uh, I, I give it a little bit of props for making it to the Heat final, but I could have it could have held up better, I think. Oh, if there's if there is one last thing to note about Unibyte, that disc would later be used for Hyperactive in the Annihilator and Tag Team Terror. If you look closely, it's the same disc with the two teeth on it. So they just didn't bring a separate one for they, Hyperactive. They did, but I guess it was overweight. And and if you look in the Hyperactive's wiki, wiki page, it's actually yeah. the saw blade from uh, the first version of Unibyte. I guess they, uh, I, I guess they just took it off because they, uh, it was either too heavy or the saw, the teeth just didn't have enough bite to it. But, yeah, that's Unibyte 2.0 for you. But um, so mo moving on, uh, we'll move on to the second round finishers, and both of them are actually very similar machines. Both are invertible. Mm -hmm. Both have spinny weapons, and both have some random spike at the back. I don't get it. But mm -hmm. we'll, we'll start off with the uh, Shadow Seed, the number four seed of this heat, and that is Brute. The Brute Drum Spinner. That did not do much in the way of damage. Yeah, the, this, this, you can tell this was years before, before Minotaur came along. So th this drum didn't really have a whole lot of uh, bite to it. But uh... and it's the teeth, I think the problem is that the teeth, are, are just way too flat, Yeah. if that makes any sense. Like, they don't have the little upward or downward-facing teeth that can really take chunks out of robots. Yeah, it, it, it could flip bots, and it could uh, it managed to break Unibyte's disc, but, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's not uh, really all that well, effective. If only it had something to feed robots onto <laughs> that drum. Something like, oh, I don't know, a... Wedge. Uh, maybe. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, um, I will say this. It's much better than whatever the heck they had in season one. Like, what the heck were those spikes supposed to be? It, it said lifting spikes. What were they supposed to lift? <laughs> the skin off of pudding. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody want pudding? Pudding! But, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, um, Brood, uh, it got a l I think it got a little lucky um, in the first round because Sir Force Lot kind of derped. But uh, yeah, I th it def if it I think uh, it it could have been a Heat finalist if uh, it didn't uh, decide to go full read. But uh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it would have beat Conquering Clown for sure. Maybe mm. I don't know. I think he could. It looks like uh, Mike Regan. Uh, he, I believe this is right after he won uh, season two of BattleBots with Spaz, right? This this is uh, 2002, so yeah, so, so he's coming off a victory. Uh, but uh, the brute, um, I, I like the look of it. I just wish the drum had more power to it. Anything else to say about br at two brute? No, nothing. Just that it's really cool they had a drum, <laughs> yes. pretty ahead of their time. <laughs> yeah, sure. But uh, yeah, that's all real say about it. Uh, we'll move on to the other. Verti verti invertible, spinny, wedgy, whatever the heck it's supposed to do, spiky thing, Black Widow. His words he speaks are true. We're all human stew. Unless we pledge allegiance to the Black Widow. What was that a reference to? Interesting. Alice Cooper. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Black Widow. This comes from the. Uh, this is from Top Secret Robotics, aka the Rocky Botboa team. It's uh, Tanya Bingham, Duane Bingham's wife, driving. And to her credit, she knows how to drive. 
Unf it's, I, I only wish the robot itself actually had more uh, effectiveness to it. Yeah, as with a lot of these Extreme Warriors bots, it's very underpowered. Mm. Yeah, I think it was just a Robotica robot that they repainted and rebranded. Yeah, this mm. is uh, psst, from uh, Robotica <laughs> Season 3. Psst. Yeah, that wasn't static. Its name actually was, all caps, P-S-H-H-H-H-H-H-T, exclamation point. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what their fascination is with milling cutters, because this is the third machine that I know they've built that have had milling cutter weapons on them. They don't what, do anything. What, what, what sort of, yeah, I was about to say, what kind of damage are you supposed to do with those things? They're basically as effective as using a pizza cutter on hard ox. Uh, and I don't mean like a pizza cutter as in like a little overhead saw, which is sort of a nickname that uh, some people have used for the weapon. I mean, as in like an actual pizza cutter that you find in a kitchen. Are, are you are you saying that are you saying that Tanya Bingham should go back into the kitchen? No, no. I mean, <laughs> it looks like they got their weapons from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll, ju we'll just take a few uh, pizza cutters here, and uh, we'll just grab this nail here, stick it on the back, and there you go. Weapons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least it has a wedge, like you like you asked for, Nate. <laughs> yeah, but sort nothing of. to feed it, feed it into the weapons. Mm. Yeah. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give Tanya credit. She, she did okay. I mean, there was no, I, don't, I don't really see how, how they're going to get past the clown, but... Uh, like, the first round, even with a few hiccups here and there, she managed to survive. And, hey, there you go. Um, what else is there to say about it? Uh, you know, it actually looks like a... It looks like a... <laughs> you know what? It actually looks like a giant D2 kit, doesn't it? With, with the uh, wedge <laughs> and the uh, wheels and the... I don't really see it. It's it's more of a rectangle than a square. Mm, and it's got the Black Widow uh, g trademark on there. A very R-rated performance by uh, the Black Widow. Did you hear that, that, that they want to make an R-rated Black Widow movie? You mean the superhero from Marvel? Yeah. Mm. But did Scarlett Johansson agree to do that? I don't know. If, if she has a nude scene, it, uh, I'd, uh, I'd, uh, I'd approve. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, but um, Black Widow, it's a thing. It, it comes back in the tag team terror, actually wins... <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, that, that pretty much covers that. So we'll move on to the first round losers, and I definitely feel bad for both these machines because I think they, yeah. they could have done well. Uh, let's start off with Texas Tornado, shall we? Not Kerry Von Eric, or <laughs> uh, or uh, the uh, cheater that everyone knows and loves. <laughs> yeah, Texas Tornado, Lifter, and there's a spike back there too. <laughs> Yeah, it actually reminds me of, um, remember, uh, there was a robot years ago called Pain in the Butt, P-I-T-B, which had that, which was basically the same design, but the tiny lifting arm, and even though the weapons are really small, they're actually astonishingly effective. Like, like it just managed to get underneath Unibyte and control it. It's a, it, it's a decent little, uh, uh, Rambot thingy, I think. Yeah, it was doing really well before it did its impression of Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> Got choked. Uh, oh. Look, Mommy, I'm a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's uh, not, not really much else to say about it, though. Um, it's, it's, it's just, it's just, it just looks like a tiny speed bump. It's got a cross uh, again with these spike at the spike tails what is this obsession with having random spikes at the back well we, we it's a lifter but we're a, a thwack bot too i i guess i mean i think very limited number of spaces so you need every gimmick you can get to better your chances uh, <laughs> but um yeah it's from austin texas uh it's a big speed bump. It, it does come back. It also comes back in the tag terror to just be a speed bump. But uh, it's, well, it's as well it's as weird as Austin, and with that design, they certainly are keeping Austin weird. What? 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 
What? Stone Cold said I just whooped 176 pounds of whoop ass. Yeah, but um, yeah, it's a it's a thing. I think um, it, it definitely had the match won if it just didn't get if the uh, antenna didn't get uh, messed up. But uh, you know what? When you're expecting robots to go flying on the top of your robot, you should do a better job of protecting your antenna instead of having <laughs> it flopping all over the place. Yeah, always protect your antenna. You always protect your aerial. The Plunderbird boys found that out the hard way. Wonky <laughs> aerial, my friend. But, uh, yeah, from uh, the deep south of Austin, Texas, we come right back up to the freezing cold north of Eden, New York. It is Sir Force a Lot. Sir Force a Lot. Combine Harvester. <laughs> I've got a brand new Combine Harvester. I'll give you the key. You know, when I first saw this team, I instantly thought. Oh, God, no, Team Waiachi, what have you done? <laughs> because they're, they, it looks like they're wearing Team Waiachi's shirts. No, believe it or not, uh, true. it's it's, uh, it's Force, Team Force shirts. Uh, these are the t- same team who competed with uh, Ram Force and Robotica and managed to come uh, second, I believe, in Series 1. And I don't remember uh, if they competed again, but uh, Sir Force a lot. Essentially, it's uh, it's the same design. It's very similar to Ram Force, except now it's got a big uh, five tooth spinner on the front, and uh, sometimes less is more, less is better because um, the teeth r- really couldn't do a whole lot to it, and then the whole weapon assembly broke. So, and then and then after that, they were just stuck running around on their weapon, not really being able to do anything, and the clown just took advantage and pushed them also- around, and that was it. Also, their side panels are made of glass. They're made of Lexan. Apparently, they thought it was acrylic, but they got the wrong material. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. And, uh, yeah, so it just shattered. <laughs> and I-, I do have to give them credit, though. that They built this thing in, like, four days. Because mm. that's what they said. That's, just, that's amazing. It helps when you have all, all kinds of stuff laying around in the workshop, I guess. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think it's a shame. Uh because I like the look of it, and you know what's also good about this robot? The drum spinner is reversible. So if you get oh. flipped upside down, you can just spin the weapon the other way. And uh... A2 could have used that in uh, Bogglebots, but it won the series anyway. Eh. Yeah. Yeah, well, don't worry. Yeah, but um, it, it's a shame. Uh, and I, th- I think if the weapon didn't crap out on it, it probably would have won, the f- won that opening match. But eh, mm-hmm. what, what can you do? So, um... Yeah, that that pretty much does it for. Uh, is there anything else to say about Sir Force a lot? It did a little better in the tag team. Yeah, thing. It made, made made it to the final round, and it had the two tooth spinner this time, which actually had more effectiveness to it. So, yeehaw! Oh wait, this is Eden, New York. <laughs> um, uh, we did good, huh? <laughs> let's go uh, let's go celebrate uh in uh, brooklyn get it get us up so that is the worst new york <laughs> accent i have ever heard you want, bro. Me, you want me to do a jersey accent then i'm jersey come on you sound like you're doing a bad rocky impression <laughs> all right let's get to the fights we've had enough um, this first round match, it was Conquering Clown versus Brute versus Sir Force a lot. And, um, well, aside from, uh, a couple good shots from the clown, one good shot from Sir Force a lot, a couple rams from Brute, there wasn't much to the fight. <laughs> yeah. Shunt made some nice holes on the top of Sir, For- Sir Force a lot. Yeah. Well, when, when you have a robot that's made out of aluminum, you're, you're an axe target for him. Mm-hmm. What? I don't know. I don't know why people be, uh, bury Shunt so much, saying that his axe lost eff- effectiveness. I mean, come on. Have you have you seen some of the bots he's uh, axed into lately? Well, it, to be fair, it lost his effectiveness with the rise of Hard Ox. Hmm. Yeah. But um. So so um. A lot of people were uh, surprised that uh, Sir Force a lot was eliminated, but. Um, if you look about halfway through the match when Sir Forcelot bumps into the, uh, floor spinner, you can see the drum starts to dip a bit, and so it's just dragging on the floor. And considering the, these, this match is, like, what, five minutes long, and they only showed a minute and a half? I assume the mm-hmm. entire, I assume the entire second half that the match was just Sir Forcelot limping around, and they just didn't want to air that, but, um... Yeah. 
Yeah, and then you can clearly tell that a lot of these were edited down, even more so than uh, the usual in the UK. Mm. And uh, the turning point was when the clown just pushed Sir Force a lot into Shunt CPZ. Shunt got some shots in, time ran out, and they gave it to the clown and to Brute. Mm. Yeah. Like, um, I think, because the, the, the clown I get, because they did do some damage to uh, uh, Force a lot's side, and uh, they, they were aggressive, and surprisingly didn't catch fire in this match. But, uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot to say about the match. But uh, Brute, um, yeah, Br- Br- Brute, you could say, may- maybe got a bit uh, lucky. But uh, what can you do? Yeah, they probably just shoved Sir Force a lot in the parts we didn't see. Mm. Yeah, but uh, pretty much covers that first match. So we'll move on to the second match, which was Texas Tornado versus Black Widow versus Unibite. It was going well until Texas Tornado got its aerial bent. Yep, <laughs> and and then it proceeded to pull a behemoth and got stuck in forward drive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank goodness that we have those receivers with the aerial on the inside now. <laughs> Hooray yeah. for Spectrum! Yep. But, uh, yeah. There it, wasn't much to this fight. No, Black, Black Widow decided to just go after Kill a lot. Unibite uh, kept, either kept getting stuck or... Tried to get some hits in with the disc, and it just went boop. boop. And, uh, yeah, Texas Tornado got counted out, and then it just started moving again. Because fuck it. <laughs> but, but as embarrassing as it is to be eliminated by a wonky aerial, it's not quite as embarrassing as driving into the pit like Brute did against Unibite. <laughs> uh, it's like Mike, Mike Regan, he's a good driver. Well, like, like he's like, Considering he, he won BattleBots with a thwack bot... And because who who else can say you you won battle bots with a thwack bot? Yeah, <laughs> you, you yeah. He he just like gunned it like a little too hard. Mm. Yeah, and it's like he was on top throughout this whole match. He broke both the weapons. This was like the only instance where I've seen Brute's weapon actually do damage, and that was when it just bent up Unibite's disc. And then the rest of the match is just brute cha- chasing Unibite around, trying to chew him in. Honestly, if Texas Tornado did not get its aerial bent, I think it would have uh, gone through instead of Unibite, because Unibite was barely moving by the end. Mm. Oh, also, sure, it got yeah. its frame bent by Kill a Lot, which was pretty gruesome. Yeah, this was this was not a good show. <laughs> hey, if the Kansas City Chiefs aren't going to go full read, then someone else is, and it was brute. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it's unfortunate, but, um, but, but at least Brute does come back for the Annihilator and actually comes runner-up, and considering it was in the same episode as Hyperactive and Cyclone, that's, uh, you gotta give him credit for that. Wait, but, we're, we're already on the semifinals? Oh, crap. Yeah, we're already on, uh, we, uh, made mm-hmm. it, to, we made it to Brute versus Unibike. Oh, God, well, all I have to say about this fight is that Brute pretty much had this one in the bag. You can pretty much, pretty much sum up this fight... Uh, by using that clip of Adam Sandler from Billy Madison yelling, "You blew it!" <laughs> that that'll be that'll be perfect. It'll it, it if whenever somebody drives into the pit, I'm just gonna have a collaboration of Adam Sandler saying, "You blow it, brute down the chute." But uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, oh well. Uh, this next match, Conquering Clown Two versus Black Widow. If you're uh... if you're a fan of clowns, or if you hate clowns or hate spiders or hate Tim Curry as a clown spider, you may be terrified by this match. <laughs> uh, it, it was... yeah, this is, this, there's a lot of pushing in this match. Not the good kind of pushing match, like Limpet versus Captain Doom. It was slow, bit ponderous. Conquering Clown's Blade got kept getting bent. There, there was uh, there was one good shot between the two, and that was at the very beginning where they just yeah. hit each other and sparks fly. And then it was just a bunch of ramming. And then Sergeant Bash came in and did the dirty work on the clown and finally yeah. sent it back <laughs> to hell. That, 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 that. Because uh, it wouldn't be Extreme Warriors without conquering clown's face getting melted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another another nightmare for the kitties. <laughs> it's, it's even even Stefan Frank said this is a family show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, e- even with Kill a Lot and Bash interfering, they they just 
just kept fighting, just more ramming. The uh-huh. Black Widow got flipped. I have no idea how. But, like, it, mm-hmm. it bumped into Kill a lot and just kind of went whoop. Ran right over. Yeah, yeah. It, I I watching the fight right now. It reversed into kill a lot and got flipped over. Yeah, weird. But um, yeah. But e- even with uh, the the clown the clown uh, getting his fringe singed, uh, they still managed to win on a judge's decision because Black Widow really couldn't do anything. Because yeah, because the, the clowns got a very bizarre design. Because um, like e- even uh, e- even if if the blade doesn't work, it's still got the wedge and. It was just, it Plus, just... it's got slanted sides to prevent from side attacks. Mm. So Black Widow really couldn't do anything to it. Also, uh, this match features one of the few instances where the uh, floor spinner actually does something. And it was right at the end when uh, the clown pushed it onto the spinner. And the Black Widow actually got spun out and actually sent some sparks flying, which I thought was a Ooh. miracle. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the clown managed to get the win on a judge's decision. And... So we get the main event of Conquering Clown 2 versus Unibite in a grudge match from last year's Annihilator. Spinner versus Spinner. And uh, this was where we got the debut of the Iron Mask. <laughs> Can I just say that the Iron Mask looks horrifying? Oh my lord. Like when, when I... I mean, it's got big... I mean, they show a close-up of it staring right into your soul. <laughs> it's like... It's like whenever I see these close, and it's like well, for whatever reason, when when they uh, bring the clown back uh, for the uh, grand final, they show that same close up of the mask, and it's like, what are you doing to us? Yikes! Yeah. Um. So the match itself, uh, I w- I was hoping to see the clown actually burn up, and for a second I thought it would, and with the way the clown was just like flailing all over the place, I half expected it to just flop over. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, yeah, a- after a few hits, uh, Unibite actually managed to take out one side of the clown's drive, but because the 50% immobilization rule does not apply in this series, the clown gets to keep fighting. And, um, I get I don't know what happened to Unibite, but it just stopped. I, su- I-, I assume it was the $4 kill switch or something, but, uh, mm. yeah, that was it. And the, the it just... The Unibite gets counted out, gets flipped, and becomes the first victim of the drop zone. We're the first out of only three in this whole damn show. So, congratulations, Jerome. You got beaten by a clown twice, and you felt the wrath of 700 pounds of dirty laundry. Congratulation. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, the matches, uh, overall, uh, I think, uh, as far as the matches go... Uh, they weren't great, but there were some entertaining moments here and there. Yeah. So, I think on a scale of 1 to 10, I'll give it a 6. Um, I'm going to give it a 5. 5 and a half. Mm. How about you, Ian? Um, just 5. No halves. No halves. We're not, we're not uh, Dave the Meltzer here. The half point comes from Mick Foley's banter with the Conquering Clown team. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really all to say about uh, this match. Uh... I think uh, we, we have time to do a bonus. Uh, you get, do you guys want to talk about the Bubblebots uh, Dung Beetle Rumble? Sure, yeah. About, sure, yeah. Let's let's talk about yeah, that. Yeah, let's talk <laughs> about it. Uh, so basically, uh, Bubblebots released a bonus, uh, a little bonus episode, uh, and it featured all the robots that went out in the first round of the Bubblebots tournament. And uh, ooh, Screw the second round, though. Those guys aren't important. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We had uh, Serious Business, Good Boy, OMG, Hard Knocks, Dr. Thwackenstein, Snappers McGee, The Berg, Lame, Sir Lance the Frog, and Pinwheel. Oh, what a glorious setup we got going here. <laughs> half, half the bots didn't work. <laughs> as <usual. laughs> But, um, but, uh, I, and again, I had the Berg to win this match, but yeah. it, t- it turns out, you did? That, yes, because it was the, <laughs> it's the only robot that actually has like an effective weapon. I mean, the only real spinners in the match, we have serious business, which no, what can it do? <laughs> um, and pinwheel, which I think, uh, just doesn't have yeah, it's, to wait weapon it. didn't spin once in this match. No. But of course, the Berg just had the need. The need for Reed! As it just <laughs> went straight into the pit. Just 
Like, I, I, don't, I don't know what the heck happened there. I got to talk to Charlie again. There has to be a conspiracy bes- behind uh, that, <laughs> that. What the holy heck uh, was that? That's definitely worthy of the Adam Sandler, you blew it clip. Uh, elsewhere, uh, serious business stopped. Dr. Thwackenstein decided fuck this match and drove into the pit as well. OMG stopped. Good boy stopped. Pinwheel yeah. stopped. Snippers McGee got flipped. Lame got yeah, flipped. Snippers McGee. Oh, I'm watch- I got to watching the fight as we speak. Like it just finished. It finishes Snippers McGee, and then it just zooms forward. I don't think Charlie knew the pit wasn't open or something, but and it's like the, the pit. Uh, it act- they actually had to manually open the pit up again because it looked like it got stuck again. But it's like, bro, even if the pit is uh, not open, I'd still stay away from that square. That's just I... bad driving. Uh, that that's that's the power. There was no conspiracy, Charlie. You just suck. That's the power. Of, <laughs> that's the power of Reed, baby. <laughs> to be fair, like when I go to Texas, where they have the pit, I do have to drive in a few times to get it out of my system <laughs> before I can really get good. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so it it came down to Hard Knocks versus Sir Lance Frog. The good news is, oh. th- there is some good news. There is some good news. Hard Knocks can self right now. The bad news Yay. is, the bad news is everything else. Yeah, <laughs> bad news uh, is we just wish uh, it would have died. Stephen and Stephen and Sub's commentary on uh, Hard Knocks was spectacular. You know, <laughs> if if you think about it, if uh, Hard Knocks, uh, the weapon like the axe is. Useless as an axe, but it could make a good grabber. Yeah, if if they if uh, he comes back with like a pincher bot, it would be perfect. Make yeah, make like put like a dust pan on the front. Make like a Have... little control bot. Yeah, that'd be good. But uh, yeah, I, I was actually rooting for Hard Knocks for some reason, just just because of the just of how I, was, <laughs> I wanted was. the Berg just so that I could just so that so that I could have Charlie. Fair, he kind of did. Uh, but uh, you, you, I, I lost you there for a bit, Nate. Well, the reason why I wanted the Berg to win was so that I could hear Charlie cut an epic promo if he won. And to be fair, <laughs> he kind of did. He did. He, he did a run in promo. Like, funny enough, when, when I saw the guy there, I thought that was him for a second. <laughs> mm-hmm. They looked the same. But uh, yeah, eventually, uh, it, it, Hard Knocks just gave up and just drove into the pit as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I will say I was entertained. Uh-huh. Mm. And uh, after this, they had the... And so uh, Sir Lance of Frog ends up getting the winning the Dung Beetle Spoon. And Charlie Dangerfield has to be escorted out of the uh, <laughs> fight, fighting facility. Yeah. And what else is new? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was funny. Con- I'm still Con- waiting for Tim to put him in the gay sleeper hold. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, come back, Charlie. You, we we want you. Yeah, back. please, please come back. Please come back. Please come back. Please come back. And uh, afterwards, they had the bonus awards. Um, best design uh, obviously went to Saw Loser. Well deserved, oh, yeah. Alex Moore. you congratulations. Mm. Uh, uh, best uh, sportsmanship went to the uh, Flick guy because uh, he helped uh, out with some of the bots. Um, oh. I forget what were the who won the other awards. Um, best newcomer went to Claws Two. Yes, mm-hmm. and we should mention newcomer meaning newcomer to the entire sport because obviously it's everybody's first time on Bugglebots. <laughs> mm. uh, there was uh, two. Others. And the last one, um, there was one other. Oh yeah, um, there was the best driver award for maximum ogre drive. Mm. Very uh, well earned. Uh, mm. uh, that's the only one I disagree with. It should have gone to Joe. I feel it should have gone to John Denny Jr. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe people who were on the podium were ineligible. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Like maybe a one trophy per person sort of deal. Yeah, that seems fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah it was all right. Um, so, but, uh... I, mean, <laughs> I mean, they beat Wee Woo, right? Wee Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, that I alone. Think that, that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, that covers the awards. That covers the Beetle Oh, Mellow. actually, there was one more. Oh, yeah, there was yeah. one more. What was it? It was uh, Sportsmanship. 
Yeah, um, I gave that to Flick, didn't I? Oh, yeah, sorry, my bad. Was you there, already said was that. There a, was, there, was there a best engineered one? Or, uh, no, just best design. Best design, yeah. So If there was a best engineered, who would you give it to that didn't place in the top uh, four? Oh, God. Mm. Best uh, engineered as Saw so, so, so Loser. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would have given it to Wee Woo. Eh, they're just wedges. Er, er. Well, no, but like, for, well, you heard what Alasdair said about uh, the technology inside Wee Woo. Ah, uh, that's yeah, true. It's true. Eh, maybe. I th- I think so, like, like, for their size, there's some good stuff going on in those tiny bots. I think, uh, I think, uh, as, like, as far as engineering and weaponry goes, I think uh, uh, Saw Loser, I, I definitely would have given it to as well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that covers the Dung Beetle Melee and uh, uh, Extreme Warriors Heat C. And um, next time we're gonna be they're gonna be reviewing the uh, bonus episodes. They're gonna have all the whiteboard matches and uh, as, uh, and as far as I know, Other Nate is go- going to be in uh, uh, one of the episodes. So with Thunder Child, so that should be fun. And uh, all, as far as Extreme Warriors goes, next time it's uh, my favorite Heat of Extreme Warriors oh, yeah. Season Two, which yeah. is Heat D. Which features the Revolutionist, Propeller Head, Psycho Chicken, The Gap, Traxilla, and Snookums! Yay, Snookums! <laughs> Which means we're getting Ed Robinson back. And maybe Brian Navi. Maybe. I'll uh, see if I can get a hold of him. But uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Give, give him a ring. I will. I'll uh, I'll send him a message. So. Yeah, um, I think until next time, uh, we'll uh, next episode is going to be uh, the Bugglebots uh, whiteboard episodes. Um, I don't know how long the episodes are going to be. I do know there's going to be two, but uh, depending on how long the actual episodes are, I think uh, we'll, we'll cover uh, one or both at the same time. So, hey, better than nothing. So, until next time, guys, I am the Hardcore Kid. I'm Otaku Nate. And I'm Rossetti's Replicas. Peace out, and I leave it to the Macho Man, Otaku Nate, on his matchup against Doink the Clown. Oh, yeah, looking forward to being in the ring with you, yeah. Think you're so, think you're a big shot, yeah. I'm going to tell you something, man. We're going to test you. We're going to test you when we face each other in the middle of the ring, yeah. Doink the Clown versus the Macho Man, Randy Savage, yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>